There we go. Share screen. All right, so afternoon session, Flask. Okay, so if, um, if you're still having issues, uh, jump into the breakout room with um, Edward, because he's working with, uh, he's working with Estuardo now. So if you, if you can't get your, um, if you're having issues with getting everything installed, go ahead and jump in there. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going with the, uh, with the lecture. So um, let's see, I'm sharing my screen, okay. All right, so what I did, um, and I, I updated the repo with this, I'm going to make a Flask template. You guys see my Visual Studio Code, by the way? Okay, so we're, I'm going to make this Flask template. So basically, we're going to keep this uh, and build onto it throughout the course, because you don't have to go into the, the test empty-handed, right? You can have this Flask template, which is basically will be just like a shell of an application that you can then plug in what the test requirements are. Okay, so you can use this and I'm gonna set it up as a checklist uh, as we go forward. But I wanna continue with where we left off on um, routing. So let me get there. Routes, let me open up this in a new code session. Okay, move this out of the way. Any questions from the morning while I'm trying to multitask here? Your uh, website that you have, do you pay for a, uh, to, like space on a server or do you have your own? I pay for um, the domain name, but it's hosted on GitHub pages. So you can, um, and I'll, sh well, I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'll show you guys how to do it. There's, you can use GitHub pages. Anything you have on GitHub can be, as long as it's, as it's a static site, meaning no backend and it's just like a HTML, CSS and JavaScript, you can host for free on, on GitHub pages. So I'll show you guys how to do that um, another time or maybe, maybe this, no, I can't just after. I have to leave soon. So I'll, I'll try to show you tomorrow, just remind me. Um, okay, so routes. So we have, when we left off, we did this one. So I wanna go on to using um, having multiple slashes or multiple as aspects of our route. So let me copy this and we'll add it to our routes dot, or yeah, server.py. So we left off here. So I'm gonna add the next route down here. Now, when you're adding routes, remember this if dunder name equals dunder main has to be the very last thing in your file. Okay, so never po post, ugh, never, paste anything below this statement, otherwise it will break your, and your app won't run. Okay, so I have, let me save my file, open the integrated terminal, and let me get my server run, make sure my, so I need to go into, make sure my shell's running, All right? So pip env shell. Okay, that's running. So I'm going to say Python server.py and my server started. So now if I go back to my browser, localhost 5000, I get my index and the other route was just hello name. So if I, let me make sure that one still works. So forward slash hello and Tyler. So I get hello Tyler. Now the new route that I added says, so it's route, user, username, and ID. So when you're passing information through a route, you use these square brackets to signify that it's a variable, right? So that variable will then need to be passed into the function that's handling that route. So this route is basically, as soon as this, my application sees a route that says forward slash users, forward slash and then forward slash, it's gonna automatically substitute whatever is between those slashes as these variables in this order. 
Okay, so if I say, let's just see what it prints. So let me see if I can put this side by side. It's gonna take up full screen. There we go. That one smaller. And right here. Yeah. Okay, so now if I go to So the variables start after the word user. So I need to type in users forward slash. And now this is the first variable that should be the username. So I'm gonna say, just say Tyler. And the ID will be, let's say 23. So that automatically populates. So I have, I'm returning the username right here with so I'm, this is using string concatenation. I have username plus username ID. So that's what's rendering to my screen. And I see down here in my terminal that I've, it's printing Tyler in 23. Now, what if I wanted to say, print my username 23 times? So how would I? Multiply. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm going to take out this after. string this string for now. Actually, I'm going to use, I'm going to keep this and make it a format string. So I'm going to say username and to insert the variables, I need the curly braces and I'm going to say username times just, I'll just keep the variables as ID. So in Python, you can take a string, multiply it by an integer and it'll print that string that number of times. Okay, so let me see. What integer is ID connected to though? I'm sorry? Um, what integer is ID though? It's what's being passed in as the second. Oh, it's 23. Slash. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to rerun this. Let me see, just rerun this code, see what I get. Cool. So this is what I was trying to get this morning. I couldn't get it to work. So this is, we're using the Jinja templating engine, which we're going to talk about in a minute. This is what when we say down here debug equals true, that allows us to see this stack trace in our browser. So we can see kind of where our program went wrong from the browser itself. So it's saying return username. And if I open this up, we can see a little more of the error. So this is where my program crashed. So the cool thing about Flask and Jinja is we can open up a terminal in our browser. So when we first start up Flask, let me scroll up to it if I can find it. We get this, where is it? I can't find it. There it is. We get, a, we get this pin. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this pin if I can. It's, I'm not gonna let me. So I just have to type it in manually. Don't go away. Where's my pin? There it is. So if I click right here, I can open up a terminal in the browser and I can start to look at what is going on with my application. So if I click here, it's gonna ask for that pin. So if I type in, uh, what is it? 650-443-901. I think that worked. Yeah, so now I can look in my console and I can start to see what is going wrong. So I can say username, enter, and it says that username is assigned to Tyler, right? So I basically have a Python console here that I can use for debugging purposes. So I can say, what is ID? So ID is 23, so it should be working, right? But if I look at the type of ID, it's gonna say it's a string. So that's my problem. It's try I'm trying to multiply two strings and Python won't let you do that. So with the routing, if we wanna get an integer, we can either, I mean, one way to do it would be to coerce this into an integer down here, but the routing or flask routing gives us the option of saying that we want this variable to be an integer. So if we say int like that, now if I refresh the page, it gives me Tyler, Tyler, Tyler 23 times. Okay, so if we want strings, we can just, it'll, the default will be that it's gonna pass it in as a string, 
But if we want it to be an integer, like if we're trying to do this, what I'm trying to do here, and I want this 23 to actually be the number 23, I can specify in my route that I want it to convert to an integer. Okay, questions about this? Okay, so for the exercise, you're gonna to have to do something where you're building a checkerboard and you're gonna to have to specify the number of columns and rows. So you'll be using this to get that accomplished. Okay. So what I wanna do now, let me stop this. Let's stop, we'll see. Oh, it stopped, okay. So let me come over here and I want to, and I, this is here for your reference, this templates that I'm gonna build, but I ask you to please build your own, um, just as a learning process. Don't just copy mine and you know use it. So follow along with me, make your own template. So when you have the, when you are doing the test, you know where everything is, you can make notes for yourself and, and use it. Um, and it's not, you're not just using mine. So let me, I'm gonna open this in a, um, let's see, open this in a new window. Okay, so I'm gonna make just a sample Flask application. So what is the first step when we make a Flask app? To install it? Yeah, so we need, so we're gonna assume that we have Pippi and B installed. So the first one we're gonna, and I'm gonna make this as a checklist. Got it, uh, the shell? Yeah, so um, we need to, why isn't this coming out as a list? There we go. So we need to create the virtual environment, right? Okay, so what is the command, the command line command to do that? Pip and V shell. Pip E and V. So before we do shell, we need to install Flask, right? So we pip E and V install <coughs> Flask. And you may, if you're on Windows, you may have to type in the M thing, yeah, dash in. Python dash oops dash m we have to install the flask every time we use it yeah yeah so otherwise i mean it because we're doing this in such rapid succession it doesn't have to be this way but it's a good habit to get into because if you make a flask application and then six months later you make another Flask application, you'd want to like start over with a fresh install of Flask. Because okay. things change and we don't even realize they're changing. So yeah, every time you're gonna do this. So actually the first thing, the very first thing is we are going to make a new directory for our application, okay? So if you're curious, the command to do that is in PowerShell and in, um, basically if you're using a Mac or PowerShell, it's uh, mkdir, and then I'm just gonna call it Flask app. And you can name it whatever you want, but this is just the name of our application. Let me close that up. Okay, so we have our Flask. I'm sorry. You do, that, you do that MKDIR in the terminal? Yep. And it'll yeah. make a folder for you automatically? It will, yes. So if I come in here, if I open up my terminal, and I don't know if, I don't know if it's gonna work in PowerShell, let me try it. MKDIR. Um, yep, it works. Yeah, so any, if you wanna make it from the command line, you can you can do it that way, or you can just do it, you know, just click there and make a new new terminal or new uh, directory. Okay. So we've made our directory, we've installed Flask. What do we do after that? Uh, 
the f- import flask. Okay, but before we do that, we so we install flask. We use pipnv to install flask. In the server. Before the server. Uh, no. Say again. No. I'm not. I'm not making. It's not coming through. Pip env. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Pip env shell. Okay, so we need to install Flask, and then we'll be installing other things at this step. But for now, we just we're going to install Flask. Then we activate our shell. Then now, what do we do? Create the server. Right. We create our server .py file. So, and we can do that in the terminal by saying touch server.py. And I'm not sure if this will work in PowerShell. I think it might not. But if that fails, you just, you know how to make a file, right? You can just go in here, click this button, add a file. So let me go ahead and do that. We're making server.py. Cool. And I'm going to link to this. So to make a link in Markdown, you just put this in square brackets, and then you put the path to your link in here. So you can just put the file name. That way you can come in, click on it, and it'll automatically open up that file. Okay, so what goes in server.py? That's where you import it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So now we say from Flask, import Flask. Be sure to get the capitalization right, right? Because if we say lowercase Flask, it's not going to know what we're talking about. So this is importing the Flask class from the Flask module. Okay, then what do we do? Uh, app equals flask and then uh, dunder name. Right, so we're gonna make an instance of the flask class and the argument it takes is dunder name. Okay, so this is creating, oops, comments instance of the flask class and passing the required ui argument you say arg okay so now what goes down here your uh, routes yeah so our routes go here Okay, so we're going to put, um, we'll just make the, the root route just so we have something. So we'll say, we're going to use the decorator and app.route. And the forward slash is just the root of our application. So I always call it index. You can call it whatever makes sense. Okay. And the Functions for our routes have to return something. Otherwise, it's going to crash our application. So we have to say, for now, we'll just return a string. So I'll just say return. Let's go ahead and put some HTML in here. So I'm going to call it the index route. Ed was able to figure it out, by the way, Tyler. I kind of figured, who what? Wasn't or was? He was, he was. Okay, yeah, yeah, I figured he would be. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, tell, tell me after what the issue was, because I want to know. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we have our one route, and then what do we always have to end our server.py file with? Your debug. Yes, but what? If. Right, if, oops. If um, Dunder name. equals under main, then we call the run 
method on our app instance and we pass it debug equals true. Okay. So now I think I wrote everything down, but I didn't actually do it. So let me go through and I'm going to say, so I have, I'm in my application where I want to create my application. So once you create the, once you make the directory, you'll want to CD or change directory into it. So you're going to CD into Flask app if you haven't. And then from in here, you create your virtual environment, right? So I'm going to say pip, whoops, pip env install flask. Okay, it takes a few seconds. Okay, so the pip file shows up, the pip lock file shows up. If you look inside the pip file, it'll see, you should see the flask or whatever packages you've installed should be listed right here. Okay, now I need to activate my shell. So pip env shell. And it looks like it worked. So now I just python server.py and we're in business. So if I go to my route, and if I refresh this, I'm gonna get this. What, ha what happens if you get this? Where do you look? Your server file. Server. Server.py, always go to server.py. Um, so now, but if I go to my, the root of my application, it was trying to go to a route that I hadn't defined yet. So if I go here, I get my index route. So any questions about that? Yes, did you pull up the server.py file again? Uh, it's right here. So let's see. Um, so I'm gonna go back to readme. Did you still need it, Sordo? Did you need to copy it or? <clears throat> I was copying some of it down, yeah, because I didn't get to follow along earlier, but I should be good now. Okay, so going back, um, so to the README, so our, let me open this up. So we make our server and the server, um, I linked to it, I'm not gonna paste it in here again. So after that, we say, what's the next step once we've made our server.py file and have all this stuff in it, what's, what's next? Create the root. Okay, yeah. Assuming we've already done like everything in here is completed. Uh, you save it next. And save it. Yes, I, I may not. The question may not be clear. So we just start the server. So and we do that by doing Python and server.py. Okay. So now we're gonna go on to um, templating. So we, we don't always, and it would be kind of a undesirable application to have to render strings every time we want to show stuff on the, on the web page, right? So um, Flask gives us, the ability to render what's called views. Okay, so views are basically the HTML applications we're used to rendering, right? So to create a view or a web page that's actually going to run, we need to, first of all, we need to keep all of our views in this file called templates. Okay, has to be called templates. It has to be spelled exactly like this. It has to be templates, not template. So the next step to get a more full-fledged application is we need to create this directory and we need to create the files that go in it. Okay, so inside, I'm just gonna do this in the template. So I'm gonna come back here. So the next step is we are going to, we're gonna, add 
I'm in the wrong place. We'll save this right here. So now we're going to add templates or add views. We'll say add views. Okay. So to do that, we're going to mkdir stands for make directory templates. Okay. So if I come down here and do that from the command line, if I control C and say mk templates, exactly like that. No, nope. has to have an S, has to be lowercase. Now, if I run, if I look in my file structure, there's my templates. Okay. So anything that I want to render to the screen, any wrap, plain HTML that we, I want to render, I need to put the, make sure that it's in this directory. So I'm going to inside here, I'm going to make a directory called index.html. Okay. And then we just do this just like we made HTML files in web fundamentals. Just make a file. I'm going to label it. I'm going to give it the title of index just so for like a sanity check and make sure it's working. I'm going to give it an H1 tag of index. That way, when I test it, I know that I'm my templates render. Okay. So what? So I made my template. What do I need to do next? Anybody done this so far? We've done this yet? Can you repeat the question? So what do we, what's the next step? Was I, my horribly worded question. Okay. So we, the next step is we need to add this render template method, I guess you'd call it, to our server.py. So in order to get the template to actually show up on the screen, we have to pass it to this render template method. Okay, so the next step would be to So it's like linking uh, CSS or yeah, CSS to HTML. Kinda, yeah, yeah. So we want to add the render template. Actually, I'm going to say import the render template. I don't know if I want to call it a function or a method. I'm going to call it a method from the, whoops. Flask module. Okay. So to do that, we're just going to basically go into our server.py file. And in addition to importing Flask, just add this here. We're going to import the render template. And I, if you're like me, you're going to forget to do this. Okay. So um, if you're, well, maybe I'll, I'll show you with, the, you know, make it a mistake, but we'll do it the right way for, for right now. So I'm just going to copy this for the example on our readme. And back to the readme. So pi, cool. So we create our, make, our um, templates directory. We import the render template method from the Flask module. So that looks like that. Then the next thing we need to do is in our server.py, in our routes, we specify which template we wanna render. Okay, so in here, instead of rendering the index route, I'm gonna say return. Now, everything, it always has to return, right? Yeah, Tim. Oh, just real quick, how did you do the view, preview, readme again? The view, oh, um, on the far right-hand side, there should be a, now it's gone, what did I do? 
select the yeah. you're on the wrong selection for pi i think you're selected on the um, server instead of the readme oh that's it thank you thank you yeah so if you're on a readme file it'll there's this little um split pane oh, with, gotcha. with the magnifying glass yeah thank you sure okay so we go to our server.py now it has to return right we don't just say render template we have to return the render template method we say render, oops, render, render template, there we go. And we have to pass in the template we wanna render as a string, okay? So I'm gonna pass it the, the HTML file that I want to show when this route is visited. Okay, so I'm gonna say quotes index.html and let me, restart my server. Okay, so now I'm basically the, the way template rendering works is Python is, or I should say Flask knows to look in a directory called templates for whatever template you wanna render. Okay, so just by saying the render template method and passing it the string you wanna render, it will automatically look in this, in this directory for this file. Okay, so now if I go back to my browser, refresh, and instead of seeing index route, I see index, which is what I typed into my index file. So we have to label that folder template? Yes, templates. <clears throat> templates. Yes, if you, if you label it template, it's, it's gonna break. Didn't, you, case. didn't you return it the, as template though, without the F? It's just the, you're just saying it's just the folder that needs to be? Yes, just the folder. The, 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 Function is render template. Okay. The place where it looks is in the templates directory. Interesting. Tim, did you just have a question or just keep your hand up? Oh no, I I mean I left my hand up, but I do I have another question. Okay. Um so okay, this template folder has to be in every single uh new project we make in that yes. directory. Yes. Not outside of it. Okay. Not outside of it. No, if you put it outside, it's not gonna find it. So it's gotta be in the same directory as your, wait, I don't want to lie to you, hold on. Yeah, it's got to be in the same directory as your server.py. Okay. Eventually we're going to be rearranging this thing. That's why I had to stop and think because we will be putting these things, putting different parts as our Flask apps get bigger, we're going to be putting them in different modules. But at this point it has to be on the same level as server.py. Oh, I see. Okay. Eventually there's ways to like access it using like dot whatever even then there. though i think even when we modularize i think the server.py and templates are on i don't i don't want to i don't want to be wrong but i believe they have to be on the same level but i don't quote me on that i think they're okay wrong. ed i think knows he was young i'm pretty sure it's still this no it's not in the same level i don't think anyway the but either way each project it's going to have their own templates for yeah them. yeah right yeah Okay. Yeah. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think it is on the same level. Like it goes in the Flask dot Flask app. So, uh, but for now, yeah. for now, let's just say they have to be on the same level. Um, any other questions? Sorry, I like to make things complicated. No, it's okay. <laughs> You're challenging my memory. <laughs> okay, so where did I leave off? So we have our import render templates. We created the templates directory. Then the next step will be to so what did I do after I imported the render template method? So I returned re or so I can say return the render template. method uh, passing it the string name name of the file to be rendered. Yeah. So just to recap, if we go back to server.py, I return the render template method, pass it the 
what I want to pass it, and it will render in the browser that template. Okay, questions about rendering templates. So, so basically, after you did your HTML, CSS, made you a beautiful web page, that's when we start doing this with the template and Pi in the background or the back end to make it run. Um, so we're it, it's kind of kind of going to be a simultaneous process. And your question leads into the next topic, which is template engines. So what we're doing technically when we're using the render template method is we're going to be using what's called a templating engine. So this will allow us to use Python to write HTML, which is kind of cool. So we're yeah, good question though. We're getting we're getting to that point. So once we have our views rendered, we're going to be able to use what's called the templating engine to render text to the screen. So once I have my template set up, um, I can pass data from Python to HTML and have it render to the screen. So let me do, yeah, I'll just do what they're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna just copy this. So let me copy it, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put this inside of the render template method. So I have a, oops, too many commas. So be sure to separate it with a comma and it'll yell at you if you don't. So inside of this render template, I have a, basically a variable called phrase and a variable called times, right? So this will be available in my template when I, when I render it. Yeah, Tim. I'm sorry, uh, where is render template um, coming from again is? Good question. So render template definition. is imported from the same module that we get Flask. So all of the tools we're gonna be using, and I shouldn't say all the tools, but most of the tools we're gonna be using throughout the course are gonna be in this Flask module. So we're gonna just gonna import, as we go along, we're gonna keep importing more and more stuff. From the flask. Oh, I see. I did a syntax error where I didn't put the comma, so it was giving me errors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I miss what import RE is? That is the Python that really keeps adding stuff whenever whenever I make okay. a typo that looks like Python, it puts that in there. Okay, no problem. It's annoying. Um, okay, so if I go to and let me start by showing you an extension. There's an extension called Jinja2 Snippet Kit. So you will want to include or download or whatever, install this extension. So this will allow us to use shortcuts to write Jinja, uh, whatever you call it, it's a domain specific language. So. Jinja is what we do to what we use to render our Python code in our HTML. So if we're going to just render a block, you can say J block and it will render the block. If we're going to do an if statement. So Jinja allows us to write kind of a hybrid of Python code and also allows us to render data to the screen. So we can write for loops, we can do, and we're primarily going to focus on the for loops and just plain rendering blocks, but this is a good tool to have. Uh, it's a lot more than we're gonna use, but um, you can go through that when you want. So with, I have that installed. So I'm gonna say, go back to, that's the wrong one, where's that? Yeah. So I want to render the phrase on my HTML page. Right, so if I go back here, go back to my page, refresh, I don't see that frame. So I want to have it rendered. So if I go, if I go to my, way too much open, give me a second. What is that too? There we go. So if I go back to my HTML and I want to render what is being passed in, Right, so I want to render my um, phrase. 
So down here inside of the body of my HTML, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say J block. No, I don't want to block. I just want, I just want this. So we're going to use these double angle brackets to render data from our from Python onto our HTML. So the name of the variable is phrase. So now if I, I'm basically taking what's being passed using the render template function into my HTML. So now if I go back here, refresh, I get hello, okay? And if I want to render times, I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't think it will. I'll just try it. I'll be damned. It works. Okay. So um, I passed. So I passed in the five and the phrase, and I was able to execute this Python code inside of the HTML code. Okay, we see the server.py uh, yes. where you have the phrase. Yes. So if I open, let me open this up, we'll close this up. So inside of server.py, I passed in my template, right? The phrase variable and the times variable. So I was able to, using the Jinja templating engine, I'm able to send that from my server back to my HTML page using Jinja. And those with the double brackets is what you have to use mm -hmm. to get it to work in that? Yes. Is there like a pro of using it there instead of just in it typing that like hello in HTML? Yes. Yes. Good question. Let me show you why. So I'm going to say, <coughs> excuse me, J4. And I'm going to say 4i in range. And I'm going to say times. And I'm going to say down here, phrase. So now if I do that, so it prints hello five times, but just to make it a little cooler, I do this. Okay, so I can basically put HTML in between the Jinja tags and have something render multiple times. So if I could make a table, oops, and make this, uh, make a table basically on the fly. So is it table, I can't remember, is it table data, TD? Probably gonna mess this up. I think we need a TR here. The TR should go inside the loop. Is it inside? Oh, you're right. There we go. What keys do you use to bring down the uh, tables and everything? Uh, I just I just type table and the if you hit the, the HTML tag and tab, it'll auto complete for you. I was no. moving it. You're talking about moving it around. Yeah. I would just hold down Alt and it'll move wherever okay. you want to move it. Yeah. So this is kind of a boring table, but you can see that like if we have dynamic data that's going going to be populated on the screen, I can you know like I can render this instead of I can make times fifty right. <laughs> so and it's going to render fifty hellos. I might still yeah. be a little bit lost. I get where you connected the py, uh, the Python file, the server.py, to be able to use index. But how does index know that it's using stuff from server.py? Use because it's render. It's using the Jinja. So Jinja is being connected through Flask with the render template. Oh, I see. So okay. it just it just puts them all together yeah. and just because okay. So you didn't need to like import it on the index as well. Right. Right. Okay. We, cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But we, and you guys always ask questions that lead to the next topic. But any other questions about this? 
I will later. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Um. So the next thing, and let me make sure I'm not neglecting my notes. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Okay. So we left off with. Oops. That's the wrong thing. Okay. So start the server, add views, render, and then. The next step would be to, I'm going to say, use Jinja. To render data from server.py to our views. And by views, I just mean all of the HTML files that exist in our templates directory. Okay. So let me add, do you guys want to see me do another example of a view or are you guys good with this? And we move on to the next topic because I'll do another one if you want. I think, I mean, I'm good. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So the next thing we need to do is static files. So static files, again, since we're not, I mean, we're, it looks like we're using HTML and we are, but the, the, Jinja, the Jinja templating engine operates a little bit differently than what's, how we normally use it. So if we want to include JavaScript or CSS, we have to do um, we have to do it in kind of an, a modified way. So if I want to add um, CSS, I'm going to use this syntax here. So I can never remember what it is. So I just, I'm just going to copy this. And actually, I think I'm going to copy the whole thing. So just like we do normally in HTML, we just import our external files in, in the head of our document. All right, so I'm just gonna paste that there. So now this is, it looks pretty much the same as what we're used to. The only difference is we use the Jinja syntax to tell Jinja where to look for our static files. Okay, so we have, it's the URL for method we label it static and we'll get to static in a minute. Then we give it the file name. Okay, so let me go back to notes. I'm gonna save this first. Okay. Okay, so to add add static files, i.e. CSS, JavaScript. Okay, so this first step is to add the, what do I call this? I'm just gonna say add the Jinja syntax to the head section of the HTML file. Okay, and then I'll give you the HTML, yeah. So I'm just gonna paste that and you can modify this any way you want, but I'm just, that's basically the code we're gonna be pasting when we when we're ready. And if you well, I'll get to that. So this is the step, first step we need to do to render static files like JavaScript and, and CSS. Now, just like with our templates, it needs to be in a very specifically named file, right? So we have to include our a file called static, right? Exactly spelled exactly the same way, you know, static with lowercase s. So in our 
in our Flask application, I'm going to add a new directory or new folder called static. Okay, let me add that to the notes as well. Add the static Leave that matter now. So we're going to add the static folder. And then we just put our regular CSS JavaScript inside here. Okay, so the file name is has to be very specific. So in the example, they call it my style. I'm going to take that my off of there just because I don't know if anybody calls their CSS file my static. So it's saying look in the static file for a file name called style.css. So I'm going to put inside of my static file, a new file called static, I'm sorry, called style.css. And I'm going to say body background color of red. Why am I doing this? To verify that it works. Yeah, I want to see if it works. So I want to make sure before I start putting a bunch of CSS in here, I want to make sure that I'm going to go to my website and I see a red background. Okay, so if I go back here and I broke it, what did I do? Oh, let me do, okay, so I added everything and I think it's because I added too much. So I'm going to take these out for now. That's why it's breaking. And it's not working. URL for static. Oh, I think I changed the wrong thing. There we go. So I have that horrible red background. So I just did that. That was just, what I like to call a smoke test, just to make sure that everything's hooked up and working right. So you would put your CSS, any styling you want in that file right there. Questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. So let's do this. So let's, um, I'm going to make this, I'm just going to copy it so you guys don't have to watch me type. So I'm going to go into my server.py and I'm going to add another route. So where should I put my new route? Should I put it on line 15? No, that's because oh, the name's got to go last. Right. So we got to put it uh, like somewhere in here. Or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to paste it right there. So I have my student info and I am returning a template or I'm re rendering a template called list.html, ran some random numbers and then student, student info. So how do I get this data to render to the screen? So I, I wanna be able to go to my, that's horrible. I want to be able to come here, go to a route, and be able to render this data to the screen. What you need to move it to the HTML? Um, like the you can move it to the HTML, but they already have an HTML file that they want it to go to, right? Oh, yeah. So how would um, I get it to render to list.html? You have to add list HTML to your templates. Exactly. So I come up here. Add my new file, call it lists, is it lists? Yeah, list.html and just make my HTML. I'm gonna call, put lists here just so I know that I'm hitting the right route. I'm gonna put an H1 tag so I can know where I'm going. These, and again, these tags can be taken out. I'm just putting them here so I know what route I'm going to and let's test it out. So I've got a new route. How do I get to it? You have to follow whatever um, whatever route path you have set up in your server. Yeah. 
So what is, where is the where's the path? Where, what should I type in? L slash list. Yeah. So instead of going to just the root, I just give it a new endpoint or a new route to go to forward slash lists. And I get my lists. Cool. So let's see, what do they do? Hey, Tyler. They, yeah. So, so now that you have two HTML files, you have to keep converting back which one of which styles you want, or they don't combine all together in one. No, they're, they're combined. So to get to lists, I just type in lists, right? To get back to the root, I just type in root. I can put links to them, right? I can come in here. If I go to my index.html page, how do I link to another route? Anchor tag. Yeah. I'm going to make an anchor tag. And how do I get? So I'm in index.html. How do I get to lists? List.html. Yeah. So I just need to put the route. I can just say, once you, when you click here, I want to go to lists. Do I need the forward slash? What dot forward slash? I honestly don't remember. List. Let's just try this. So down, if I scroll down past my 50 hellos, actually, let me refresh. So I have my link for lists here, and it takes me to lists. Mm -hmm. And if I want to, so you can put like, a, you know, nav bars, all that other stuff. You're just going to be linking basically between the different routes that you have set up. You, so should, if you, you want, should put a beginning slash in the anchor tag though. Is there? Okay. Thank you. Right now it's okay. But later on when the URL start piling up. Right, 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 right. So this is how to get a nav, a nav bar working. Yeah. If I wanted to make a nav bar, I could do... Um, you guys are going to see my horrible HTML skills. So you probably already seen them. Um, is it nav? Right. And if I say, let's say, I don't know, UL Kali times three home about, uh, I don't know, news, right? Yeah. What did I do? If I could save it. Where am I? Look, index? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. They're there. So yeah, we just turn, change those into anchor tags, style them, make them look pretty. And that's your, yeah. So this would be, you know, you would just set up the route to go to, let's do that real fast. So set up the route to go home is just forward slash. Oh. There we go. So that goes home. I'm already I'm already home, but yeah, right. that's basically okay. the you know the gist of it. Okay. So getting back to our, what was it? Lists, yeah. So let's go to lists. How do I get the data onto my lists page? So I'm gonna show my server.py next to my list.html. Oops, I closed it. So how would I see the student info that's set up here? on my list.html. You have to link the route. It's already linked. So I've got, so lists is, remember when I go to the lists route. You can add it at the end. Yeah, so I can, basically right now, all I'm showing is lists. So how do I get this data to render in here? Call it. The, Call it what? the render function. Double render. braces. Yeah. So we use Jinja, right? So I'm going to say I'm passing in the student info list as students. So I'm just going to take a look at that. I'm just going to pass it students. 
and run it, and I got my students. Okay, that looks horrible though, right? So I want to make this look a little prettier. So how would I get it rendered using Jinja and HTML? Are you trying to get it like a table like you did earlier? Yeah. Didn't you do paragraph tags on both sides? Or yeah. But my here? list, so my, my students is a list of what? You can do interpolation probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Access each one basically. Yeah. How do I do that? Well, for a, for a, 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 a list, you would have to do bracket zero for student. Right. But I want to use like, I want it to be like, no matter how big my list gets, like if I have 80 students in my list, I want to be able to go to list. A for loop? Yeah. Yeah. So Jinja has the ability to run a for loop, right? So I can just say J4 and I can say for student in students. And for now, I'm just gonna print my student to see what I'm getting. Hey Tyler, why, would, why are you using the uh, variable students instead of student info? <sighs> Am I doing it wrong? Well, oh, students oh, equals no. students info. Yeah, so student info is the list of dictionaries. Uh -huh. Okay. And then when it gets passed using the render template method, the variable that it's being passed at passed as is student. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let see. me let me just widen this so you can see it. it looks a little, yeah, cramped. Yeah. So I'm passing two variables to my Jinja templating engine. I'm passing random numbers, which is this this list of numbers. And I'm passing students, which references this variable right here. List. Okay. Okay. Could you just say student info instead of students equal info in line 20? I could say, yeah, I can call this whatever I want. I can call well, I this. I mean, like, like, take, like, not equate it to anything, just put student. Like on the HTML. No, in, student yeah, info. no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Yeah, Python, you have to explicitly declare um, or assign a variable. There it, and JavaScript has functionality like that too, where if there's, you can just pass the word, but in Python, they, they, that doesn't, you have to actually set it equal to something. Regardless of if it's defined above, but yeah. because it's in this mm -hmm. at app thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is how we do it. Okay. Yeah, it's just, that, just the way it is. Um, until they, in, unless Jinja comes up with a way or Flask comes up with a way to only put that as a, without an, setting a variable, that's just the way we got to do it for now. So back gotcha. in my HTML, I'm iterating over my students and I'm printing out. So basically it's modified slightly, right? We have four student and students, which is pretty much the same. The only difference is instead of just um, using colons to end our, to make a code block, we have to actually make a Jinja code block, right? So we have to say the four and then we have to explicitly end the four, end the four loop. So getting back to list, if I run this, now that's not very interesting, but it's basically I'm getting to each student in the list. So like how- You would need to- Go ahead. So you would put the bracket in, front, in after the student, mm -hmm. uh, after the curly brace, first curly brace, right? Yeah, so you're saying like, if I wanted to get one of the properties, or one of the yeah, keys to access yeah. one of the yeah. So if I wanted to get the student elements. name, I was just going to print out all the names. So if I wanted it to be, oh, I'm not doing it on time. All right, we'll just I'm going to start this, and I don't know if we'll be able to finish it. So I'm going to make a table. Oops, and I want to make a table of this data, right? So I want like one column to be, uh, let me make this bigger. I want one column to be the name and I want one column to be the age. Okay, so I have my, my Jinja inside of the table, right? So for, I wanna iterate over and have whatever I put inside here will be rendered each time this loop runs. Okay, so if I wanted to make a table row, right, I would say 
uh, TR, right? And if I, how would I specify that I want these to be the um, columns of the table? Table data, TD. Say again? TD. TD, yeah. So if I say TD, let me just move this to the back. I probably could have done that better. Slash forward TD. So now if I run this, I get all of my names in a row. So how do I add the ages? Another TD mm -hmm. or another TR. So another TR? So we put it you may be right, row, right next to it. So TR on the bottom and another TD with the ages. So it'll be on the right side of it. Like that? Yeah, and then TD with the ginger. Okay. Students age key student age well well oh yeah right? yeah 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 I, th okay. I think you may be right i I'll, let's see what we get okay so that made two basically it's separate so i have michael and then his age on a separate row john and his age on a separate row so i th how do i fix this Wouldn't the student's age be under student name, like in the same row? Yeah, I think so like that. And then. Yeah. Oh, because the row and then yeah. the TDs are each next to each other, left and right. Yeah, because the row is like all the, the total horizontal row, right? So right. I want each row to be the name and the age. And so that should be. Okay, if I run this, and that's, I get what I was hoping for. So if I were to inspect this and look at the HTML, if I open up, where is it? Table, T body. So it basically writes all of this for me. All of this HTML was written. And again, if I had 80 students in my list, it would do this 80 times for me. But I've only written, what, five? two, four, six, maybe eight lines of code. So the, the templating engine is very powerful and lets us write basically dynamic HTML. It writes the HTML for us. Any questions? Whenever you guys don't have questions, it scares me. Let me do this. I haven't done this yet. Let's the processing um, time right now. <laughs> I feel like this is easier to grasp than what we were learning yesterday. Yeah. Way easier. I'd say so. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think I and I, I love this. I love building apps and web apps. It's it's I could do it all day long. So let me stop sharing. Whoops. Stop sharing. Stop the video.